Hi, hello, and welcome to Man with a Mentor. I am the man, your host, Matthew Bernard. And you may be wondering what a show called Man with a Mentor may be about. And basically, it's about people who, as they grow through their lives, um, find that thing that they really want to do, and they just go for it until they get it, which is always nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I have a great example right here with Nicholas Arnold. And the first thing that I want to tell everyone is that you spell Nicholas with a U. It's L-A-U-S, I, which I, is distinctive. It wasn't my choice. Right. <laughs> right. You're I don't think they. I don't think my parents uh, knew how it was spelled. Oh, gotcha. I thought they might be, you know, I didn't know if they were maybe from Australia. And they were like, yeah, let's give them the first three letters of our country. No, or they're not no, Austrian. They just, I think they just made up their mind at the last second and weren't sure how to spell it. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so you're the smart one. No, I'm just teasing. Um, well, I'm going to read something about you here. Um, Nicholas Arnold is an artist with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Wright State University in printmaking and a lot of other art forms and an MFA from Syracuse University. So that sounds impressive. Oh, thank you. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, because uh, there was also something in your bio that you were born in Ohio, but then you lived in Alabama and then came back here. So how did you get back and forth to different places? Like, what happened? Uh, when I was really young, my, my parents split up, and mm-hmm. my uh, stepfather, we moved to Tallahassee, and then my mom and he split up, and we moved to Alabama, and then kind of lived all over the place. And then right. towards the end, I ended up coming back and living with my dad here in Dayton. I want to start with something that you're doing now. Um, two things. And um, you run or direct two different art galleries, right? The one at mm-hmm. UD, the University of Dayton, yep. in case yep. people don't know what UD is, United Dairy Farmers or something. <laughs> um, and also at a place called the Blue House, and for more information on the Blue House, you can check out the Blue dot org. Yep. Um, so tell me about those two things and how those happened. Um, so when I when I finished my degree, uh, immediately my my partner and I, my wife uh, Ashley Jude Jonas, we ended up moving to Boulder, Colorado, so she could get her Master of Fine Arts. Oh. Um, and then towards the end of that, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do and. Uh, I got a couple of adjuncting jobs in Dayton and she got a couple and it's like, well, we can just head back here for a little bit. And uh, a friend of ours was buying an old house that was like 3,000 some square feet in Northwest Dayton and wanted to start an art center there. And uh, we're, you know, we have MFAs, we're relocating to Dayton. She was like, hey, would you be interested in trying to run this project with me? And we ended up starting the Blue House Gallery in Northwest right. Dayton in, in 2014. Right. And so. you live, we, wait, do you still live there? I, or still, what's li- this? I still still live there, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and other people live there? Or no? Not, not, like not, people any, that, not, not any longer. Like, right. Like, so it was, it, was, um, it was more of kind of like a, a we, had, we were having like a lot of artists come in from around the country and stay with us and like make work and like, like work in the gallery and stuff. But now it's just uh, me and me and Ashley and our dogs, and we still do shows though, right? And we still invite uh, artists from all over the country, but they just don't stay in right. our house anymore, right? Right. So. And how <laughs> long do people show their work there? Is it like a two day thing, a two week thing? It's usually, or, usually about the course of a month. Um, yeah. Like, so where do they stay when they're well? Like, this, this, <laughs> well, right now we've, we've actually got it grant funded now, so like oh, artists no. actually have um, the, when they're coming in from out of town. Uh, they can either book a hotel or something like that. Um, but most tent of the time, in the backyard. Well, no. we, we can do a tent in the backyard. We have uh, our neighbor though is actually uh, hosting our next upcoming artist who oh, arrives nice. actually tomorrow. So oh. yeah, Josiah Golson. Oh, nice. So yeah, yay. <laughs> well, that's, what about uh, the University of Dayton? Like, how did that? Well, the University of Dayton, I was adjuncting, um, teaching art at like a number of different institutions in the area, Sinclair, Edison Community College, uh, the Art Institute of Cincinnati, uh, all kinds of different places, and um, including University of Dayton. And when their gallery position opened up, I had uh, I'd applied to it and um, I didn't get it. 
and then <laughs> and then that person don't left. say don't call him anything right now <laughs> yeah. Nick. and then and then that person left and then they uh they uh they uh called me up and said actually we would really like to see if you would be if you could try and do this job for us and yeah i've been there ever since do you think most people that are in a gallery are artists or do you think there's some people who just aren't art inclined but love art but are also like run or specialize in like being in a gallery do you know what i mean yeah yeah um i i would guess that most people that probably run galleries are probably more like art historians um and uh curators and people that like really love art rather than artists themselves but i would say that kind of varies like i've known both so all right yeah right you're both yeah Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to study a lot of art history or were you like, oh, please? I, I, I studied a lot of art history in graduate school. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, uh, I've taught art history at um, Edison Community College and things like that. So, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay, so let's go, let's go back to when you're just a little, little Nick, little Saint <laughs> Nick. Um, so when do you think you, something blossomed in your brain that like, I want to, jaunt over this way or like to the art way or like when when did those inklings start to happen it was so around my uh senior year of high school uh i had a lot of trouble because i'd gone to different so many different schools um that uh it was taken it took a while for me to get all my credits together all right and around my senior year uh i found out i only had to take two classes And uh, I was going to Colonel White High School for the Arts, which was a fine arts magnet school. And I came home and I told my dad and he was like, he's like, well, that's great. You can get a full time job. So then I went back to school and I signed up for every art class that they had. So I wouldn't have to go. (laughs) (laughs) I (laughs) love this. It turned out I really loved it. Was there any worry either from you or parents or people around you about like literally becoming like a starving artist, like literally? Or, or do you, do you just think, no, I'm going to do this and I'm going to like make it work. So I had no worries of that. (laughs) I just figured, uh, at worst I could, I don't believe people out there. Do you believe them? (laughs) I figured at worst I I could just like mow lawns or something and, and make art on the side. So I just kind of had a much different mindset where it was, I need to make this work. I don't really want to do other things, not in art. Um, right. I don't have any interest in other things. <laughs> um, uh, my other jobs, like jobs that I would get, it's like, this doesn't even, it's like, I don't really care about this job. <laughs> right. right. No, I know yeah. how you feel. Yeah. I'm waiting to care about a job. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just wondering, cause you also, um, seem to have like a really good sense of humor about your art. I mean, we have a behind <laughs> us, we have you as an astronaut with Jack Daniels, which I'm not sure what it's about, but it's funny. Um, but like, how would you conceptualize like how ideas like come to you, how you start to say, I'm going to pull these things together. I'm going to do it in this way. How do concepts materialize for you? Um, so for me, uh, I think one of the big things is, uh, I kind of have to have like an inside joke in my head. Like there has to be kind of a punchline for my work. All right. Um, and I usually start there. Like that would be kind of funny. Like, like if I did that, All right, right. <laughs> you right. know, you know, like, uh, like there oh, aren't yeah, a yeah. lot. I feel like artists are, we're serious. very serious. Right. We're very I, serious. Yeah. I feel like there isn't enough humor <laughs> like in art. So yeah. I like that you, like there's a tongue in, is it tongue in cheek or just flat I would out? I say it's pretty, it's pretty, I'm not, I'm not really trying to not. Oh, you're not fun. trying to like, <laughs> you're not. I, tr- I feel like if somebody is like, like, this is stupid, it's kind of like, it's supposed to be. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like yeah. that. Cause sometimes you're like, you know, some people, myself included, look at some art and I'm like, is that hanging the right way up? Or, you know, I don't know like what it, I'm trying to f- figure out. It's got to have some deep meaning, right? But 
it doesn't have to have no, deep meaning. No. It could be stupid. I mean, with or, the astronaut thing, like uh, this, for instance, I mean, yeah. this was kind of about, it's like a cultural critique in some ways, but it's also me dressed up as an astronaut advertising different products because of kind of the commercialization of space flight. Like, this is kind of the direction we're heading, and it's like, well, what if we just kind of took it there in the dumbest right. way possible? Right. Like, what if I was a, a self-made astronaut advertising his, like, these products so he could afford to go to space? Oh, right. <laughs> right. I, I kept, like, I don't know if a big movie when I was a kid that had an influence on me was Blade Runner, because um, I was like, I do not want to see, like, advertisements in the sky and stuff. I don't know if you've seen Blade oh, Runner. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know how, like, the sky was not, you couldn't really see the sky. It was all advertisements everywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, please, I don't want to live in a world like that. But you're kind of, like, saying maybe, like, sp space, maybe. they might cover the moon with giant bumper stickers or whatever the coke logo like you might not look up in the sky and there's no moon it's just a giant coke logo or something i, I definitely feel that it's a little inevitable in some ways <laughs> <laughs> but like not not you're funny a, but this is depressing negative, not, in a, not in a negative sense like you know it's like uh, you know we have there's always going to be a kind of uh, we're gonna take things in a stupid route as well as in a smart route at the same time we never don't you know we as humanity, that's just kind of who we are. Now, do you, I mean, do you do other things in terms of medium of art? Like more what you would call like traditional art of like going and looking at paintings or looking at s s sculptures or whatever. Oh yeah. I mean, like I, I work with, um, so my job entails me like working with artists kind of to try and make their ideas reality. Um, so, so you're like a mentor in that way. Mm, yeah, kind it of. fits yeah. right in with this show. You <laughs> see that? How I did that? <laughs> but yeah, like I, I try to make their ideas a reality. Uh, you know, so they'll come with come to me with like um, the idea for an exhibition or something like that. And it could be, you know, somebody who's a super traditional sculptor who makes you know uh, like just beautiful like handmade wooden detailed carved works, or it could be an artist who makes these beautiful like ceramic vessels that. Are, are have something that are kind of take them out of like the normal ceramic vessel realm um, and trying to make that look amazing and good in, a, in an exhibition. But it could also be um, like pretty wild, like from, you know, like uh, we had an artist one time that uh, didn't want any lights in the gallery. Uh, they had a, a virtual reality uh, Reiki he healing cave that you could access um, via, via a virtual reality headset and like all these like different chakras on the wall that all hummed with like on te televisions that all hummed like this healing tone, uh, you know? Oh. So it's can be very traditional and it can be on the opposite end where it's like you really have no idea where, where it's, what what's you're happen. in for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think um, people like respond more to interactive art that would be like that or to just looking at a painting and then scratching their head and walking up to the next one. And like, what do you, like, what do you think the average person like ingests art and how do you influence that? I think the average person that's not an artist is going to have like very different opinions than somebody that who's is an artist. Um, I, with my personal work, I try to make it accessible to as many people as possible. Um, and almost to not seem like art, if possible. Right. Like a cardboard cutout of yourself dressed as an astronaut holding a glass of whiskey. Not a whole lot of people are going to be like, that belongs in a museum. Uh, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> like they're going to, they're going to, it's, it's, you know, it's humorous. It's funny. And like, it's entertaining. Right. You know, and, uh, and I like, I like the entertainment value of art. Wondering, um, your wife is mm -hmm. an artist or your partner. She is. I don't know. She like, is. What am I saying? Yep, we're married. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and she co-runs the Blue House mm -hmm. with you, which is at thebluehousearts.org. Yep. I like to mention things. Like I'll do it a third <laughs> time. Um, and I'm just wondering, like, is it like head Like when you have two artists in the same house or is it, 
collaborative? Like, how does it work? Like, because like you know, some artists they want to be the artist of the couple, and the other one can have have their normal see to their lives. So, what's it like in the Arnold household? I yeah, I wouldn't say we we butt heads when we when we collaborate and try to do an exhibition of our own work together we might butt heads and like <laughs> uh, my, our, our working processes are just totally different styles and things like that. Like she's much more reactive and playful. And I'm like, well, here's my idea. I'm just going to make it like, don't bother me until I'm done. Oh, oh right. Okay. <laughs> um, That's a guy thing. Though, maybe. Yeah. But like, uh, but you know, she wants input and feedback during her process of making. So like that kind of becomes difficult. But I think one of the interesting parts uh, about our relationship is, um, in terms of our our want for kind of a social practice as an artist, uh, the Blue House kind of fulfills that where we can both interact with artists and we make a really good team in that sense where we can like think about like the ideas that we want to project going forward and the ideas that we want to put out into our community. Yeah. So what else is happening? What else is happening? Like right now. Right now. Like what are um, your future? Right now. Uh, and so like this weekend, Blue House is opening again for our 2024 season. Uh, we're bringing in an artist, Josiah Golson. Um, and then coming up in the end of April, we're going to have an artist, uh, Jesse Lee, who will be doing an exhibition there. Um, with University of Dayton, we just opened a brand new art center, the Roger Glass Center for the Arts located right. at 29 East Creative Way. We uh, just opened, a, uh, I just opened an exhibition that I put together called Get Together, um, and it features 90 different local artists um, and, and their different works kind of all put together to kind of create this uh, sense of community for this new building because it's supposed to be the new gateway for University of Dayton and right. be kind of like a building that's meant for everybody as opposed to like the University of Dayton bubble that kind of happens on campus. Oh, in terms of mentoring like other artists, um, if you could tell someone one thing, like maybe that you learned along your path, like do this or don't do this, what, like, what would that be? I, I'd probably go back to the participate. Mm -hmm. Just if there's an opportunity, see if you can participate and join it. You know, um, try not to think less of like things that are going on. Like you're not nothing's nothing's really above you, you know, or, or below you. Like you you can join in anything, right? You right. know, and bring bring some kind of assistance to make cool things happen. So I love that. We're gonna end right there with positivity and fun. We're with Nicholas Arnold. That's N I C H O L A U S. And he's at nicholasarnold.com. And you can also find his gallery space at thebluehousearts.org. Um, you can check him out at either of those two places. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show, Man with a Mentor. Thank you, Nick. And um, we're out. We're out.